I don't see you. Wait, give me 15 seconds. <laughs> I'll have another sip of beer. Yeah, you're not live. Put the glass balls out of camera. It's not in camera. Make sure. Am I live? Am I on yet? Oh, for heaven's sakes. This is always the problematic part. It's the problem. This is Apollo 13. Failure is not an option. Uh -oh. Charles, they no. may have gone away from it. You're live. I'm live. live. Am I still okay? Because. Oh, you're there. You're there. <laughs> okay, so I'm live. Okay. I can just see your forehead. Okay. Hey everybody. Hey Charles. Yeah. Hey everybody. Is there anybody here yet? If not, no. Charles, could you get rid of this extra screen screen I have here? Will that cause any problems? I I, can, I should never click out of wherever I was. It's like I have to. I have read and understood. Okay. Yeah, okay. Now it's saying you're about to join a Google. Plus, hang out on air again. It's fine. Just click join. Am I still on the same? Okay. Okay. Click okay. Okay. There's always a drama. <laughs> Is anybody there yet? There are three people watching, but I can't tell who they are. Hi, everyone. Diana here. I'm here. Thanks, Charles. Bye. Bye, John. Have See, a nice. Have a, have have a, a Rita Montgomery. Oh, hey, Rita. You know, I tried to figure out a way to get this turned around so that you guys could watch over my shoulder. I didn't get it, but I will eventually figure out. Uh, it's just about space up here, and um, you know, it, space is tight up here believe it or not because i have a ton of space really but anyway let's get you also have mary wheeler oh hey mary jay petranovich and jay. charles charles <laughs> charles you just helped me set it up i want to introduce my daughter let me let us know if you can hear her um she's going to be uh, um translating the chat and asking questions so you should be able to hear her. Anyway, I'm going to turn the camera down to my workspace now. So if you want to look away while that happens, so you don't get dizzy. Well, that wasn't too bad, was it? Also, you have a Barb box. Hi, Barb. How's everybody doing tonight? Hope everybody's good and you're ready to play with watercolors. Um... I've got a little agenda I want to follow. And just to start out with the basics of watercolor, and then I'm going to do a sketch. So I have here some watercolors, brushes, and paper. The I would say the most important thing to think about when you're starting watercolor well, you is... have uh, Lark, too. Oh, hey, Lark. AKA Marsha, um, is the paper. Paper is hugely important, and I use, I actually really like, it's real widely available, and it's very nice paper. It is the um, Strathmore watercolor, it's the 400 series best, and um, comes in a pad, and you can usually get it at all of the big box stores. I also like a lot Arches uh, is a very nice paper and this one happens to be on a block and I'm going to explain that to you in a second. My other absolute favorite that I don't have right now is Fabriano Artistico and that's another 140 pound made in Italy really really fabulous paper but um, if you 
I would go to the, uh, the the cheaper one is the Strathmore, and it's it's really quite good. There's no reason why you shouldn't use that. And for those that don't know, hot press. I know this is um, up. Well, now it's right side up. Hot pressed is a very smooth. You can imagine from the name that it is so pressed while it's hot uh, with a hot. So, and then the cold press is more uh, rough. And then there's also a rough, which is super fun, super fun to experiment with. So, this is the block. This is a block. And I'm going to show you how to remove. A painting from the block so I just started this painting it hasn't gone very far yet but what I'm going to do is all around the edges it's all glued if this was confusing you it confuses a lot of people all around the edges it's glued except for one little spot and I'm going to put my palette knife and I really wouldn't use an exacto because it'll it's sharp but um, and you don't want to cut your paper just use your palette knife um, best to have a metal one to sli and slide it all around the edges and it'll come off of the block this is a very convenient form because the, the paper is stretched so if you try to work on watercolors on a pad or a loose piece of paper. Can you check your video and sound? Uh, Barb Cox says it paused. It, it will pause occasionally. It will pause. I, everything seems to be fine. Great. So. Yeah. I was just watching Lindsay, the frugal corn, uh, crafters uh, live stream this afternoon, and they do sometimes pause. So okay so this is the block that I just pulled this paper off of and uh, it's going to put that aside for a minute and show you a really quick and easy way to start now this is a piece of masonite plain old right out of the just go over to the um, lumber yard or the Lowe's or whatever and ask them to cut you masonite Masonite. I have a pile of these cut. I have, and I'm going to talk about kind of. Australia. Oh, hi, Australia. Isabel. Hi, Isabel. <laughs> Who else did you say was here? Uh, a, a Priscilla Cordero. Hi, Priscilla. Okay, so I have this is a piece of that Strathmore that I cut to fit to this board, and I have four binder clips here. I'm going to set those aside for a minute. I'm just going to move that a little bit. Okay. I'm going to take the other thing you need is brushes. And um, I have some good brushes. I have some average brushes and I have some better brushes. This is part synthetic, part some animal I can't remember which it's an Escoda I love this brush this is a Neptune I also love this brush it's a nice big fluffy one inch um, wash brush and this is huge this this brush is huge to get started I would say um, you know, I gotta tell you that the Princeton art brushes are very good. I've used them for years, and this this one in particular is I don't even know how old it. The very first the the um, Escoda Versatile. It's um, I'll I'll put links. I meant to do that today, and then I. I didn't. I have a couple of these, and I really love these. They're more expensive, but they're not as expensive as the Full Sable. Um, I know there's other brands that are like Fake Sable now. Brushes have improved dramatically since I first started painting. The Princeton Art Company makes a great brush. 
I'm not recommending these Windsor Newton Scepter Golds anymore, and I'll tell you why. Unless Windsor Newton can tell me that I'm doing something wrong, I'm just splashing that in a bit of water, watch, it splits. Well, of course it's not splitting now, but it, you know, you can actually see that. You see how that splits? That's really frustrating. So I'm not, a, I'm not using those anymore. The rounds are fine, the flats are not. So um, brushes are important too. Um, most not as important as paper. Paper's number one. <laughs> And then the last thing I'm going to talk about, I'm going to put this aside because this is the topic that everyone wants to know about, and that's the color palette. Here is my basic palette. It's pretty extensive. It does not need to be that extensive. Uh, but the basic colors, I, what I have here is I have dark green, sort of a, this is boho green from Bohemian Green, not boho. That's a core color. So I have a, at, over here I added another green, which is Viridian. I can't see the jar. Here it is. This is another green that's a really nice color for mixing. I'm going to show you a basic palette in just a minute. But what I've got going on here is really brilliant low um, primary greens and muddier greens just to so I don't have to mix them as much then we've got the yellow ochres the muddier ochre yellows that are more earth tones orange yellow yellow goes so quick this is actually yellow goes really fast and it's like all my yellows are like empty because they go so quick because you use them up because it's a lighter value so I need to buy some new yellows but I love the cadmium uh, light and this one is my absolute favorite cobalt yellow it's just a great mixing yellow I need to replace that and then the gamboge this is a lot of information um, and I and I don't want to like overwhelm anybody so I'm not going to get it. So then we have the reds. And um, I have four reds. I usually don't even use that many reds. I use a, a true red and a purpley red. I've got three blues. Before, while I'm thinking about this, I'm going to spritz my palette down. Hold on. I've just taken my mister right to what you missed in my foot i did <laughs> i missed it i missed it Bess's but this is my daughter by the way hi if, everybody <laughs> she's she's reading the comments and stuff for me okay so <laughs> did it feel nice when i missed it your foot it feel nice. yeah okay so then this is teal which i've added because i just love the color i think yeah that's a core color and we go into the Quinn yellows, the Siennas, and more earth tones. So let me break this down a little bit further for you so it's not confusing. You don't need all these colors, first of all, number one. I think if you're just starting, I'm just going to set this aside somewhere out there. Uh, boom. Okay, I've got yellow. I actually grabbed this palette because it had yellow in it. <laughs> and I'm so I'm so low on yellow. So um red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. Okay. This is a rich green gold, which I prefer. This is a sap green, which is a really um, more of a look of a primary green. So what you want to do to set up a palette, and it doesn't matter what size of a palette you have, 
is put some color in there. And I'm putting in plenty of color because, of course, uh, we all know that watercolor is rewettable. So I'm going to, and you could say that gosh, I get so goopy when I, wait a minute, is that right? Yeah. Second guessing myself, my rainbow. There we go. That's the, that's the purple and um, ultramarine violet from CORE and French ultramarine. Daniel Smith. Now you might be noticing that all my colors oops, are different tubes. And I'm going to tell you why that is. It, once you get nice juicy sap green from Daniel Smith. These are basically the watercolors I use. I use Daniel Smith and Graham and core core is uh, newer on the market it's fantastic great pigment load and um, all of these have great pigment loads it's just a question of what's available for me what i got on sale um doesn't matter it, in my mind it doesn't matter once you get to professional level if you're using oh and windsor newton are fantastic too oh you have a genie evans van top Oh, hi, Jeannie. Jean. I think it's just Jean. Jean. Oh, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> hi, Jean. Thanks for coming by. Thanks to all of you for coming out tonight and um, spending Friday night art night. Um, so Windsor Newton, these are my preferred brand, and there are plenty more on the market that are professional uh, artists. Great. You can start with uh, Cotman. Makes a great student grade. But don't try to mix it with an artist grade because it'll just, the artist grade will just overwhelm anything in a student grade because the pigment load in the student grade is so much lower. So in other words, if, I, is that, is anybody wondering what I mean by that? So, Here's some, here's some blue. Let's pretend that, okay, there's some yellow. To get to green, I'm going to need more yellow than blue because of the, it's really not because of pigment load. It's because of other things. But that same ratio, like if you were trying to make, a green with an artist grade blue and a Cotman or student grade yellow, it would take you a ton of yellow. Just You just might never get there. So that is what I refer to as kind of a basic palette. All right, moving along here. I'm going to add in some dead palette colors. Um, Quinn gold, yellow ochre. Let me look. I think I can't resist an olive green. And um, I think here's that boho green. You can see I don't have Indian red, which I should have. But I don't own that color. And I like to have an indigo. Or green gold. See, this is where someone who is picking out your if if, some, if you ask somebody what color should I get, they'll say, "What do you want to paint?" And that will determine the colors that you get. So there's uh, uh, loads and loads and loads of personal palettes out there. Jevis, do I have? I need a. I have this right neat. Sepia. Sepia should do it. Sepia. You have this all nice and neat. What did I do here? Who knows? Anyway, it should be a raw or burnt sienna. I should have, but I don't see it. 
Okay, so I'll just go with the sepia, which is, you know what sepia is. Okay, so that'll, these colors will kind of tone things down a little bit. I should have red, yellow, and what you can do, what you do is you can mix these toned down colors with your basic palette not coming off indigo come on there we go and um you'll get you'll be able to change the color in a way that will give you just a whole lot more options with the earth tones or the what we call the dead palette okay so i'm going to put all these away um, it's a dead palette. It's it's like earth colors. It's it's just not as lively. That's that's what they called it. That's what I that's what they called it. So okay. So now I've talked about the paper, most important brushes, important invest, but you don't need you don't need sable. Although if you have them, if you have any extras, you can you could send them to me. I'll take them off your hands for you. And um, color, professional grade or student grade, either one or the other. Um, and that's it. So now I'm going to show you a trick. This is one of my favorite tricks in watercolor. First of all, I have two. I have two bowls of water over here. Mary says she's hanging with a bunch of different brands of cushion blue. They really vary. Yes, you will see that. Boy, I was so surprised when I got the indigo blue from Core. I had the indigo from Daniel Smith, and I got the indigo from Core, and I was shocked at how different it is. So, yeah, look carefully. It's really so good if you can if you're able to pick out the colors in person. Daniel Smith has a or used to have a color chart that I was supposed to look up and I forgot to. So, all right. Here's my big trick. You ready? Okay, I've got my great big wash brush. It's so soft. Love this brush. And I'm just gonna lay down. Is core spelled C O R E? No, it's Q O R. It's Golden's newish line of watercolors um, and lives up to the Golden reputation in my mind. I think they're just beautiful colors. Okay, so I have got this side of the paper nice and wet. And I'm going to, you can see how it's curling. It's going to curl on you. And I'm sure you've all had this problem. It's a pain in the neck, frankly. Um, now I'm going to wet the other side. Okay. And usually you would do this with your paper, or this is, Kind of the classic way to start a watercolor painting is to wet and then oops, looks like oh, I started my painting. Jean says Daniel Smith still has the charts in December. They have two sizes. Oh wow, okay, that's good because as I wish all the companies would put out those charts. They're really a great resource to have uh, those those charts. Thanks, Jean. Um I wonder if they probably just the website has them. Uh, okay. So now this is all you see it's flat. It's flat. Totally flat. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna binder clip it on the edges. And what that's gonna do is what's happened now is that water has expanded the paper. Right? So And putting the clips on it, as the paper begins to dry, 
you just might need to move the clip. It's going to pull against those clips. See, there's a bubble right there. Don't want that bubble there. Feels pretty dry there. Oh, it is dry there. Okay. Clean water. Make sure your bubble's out. Usually at this point, what you would do is tape all around and then let it sit overnight. Um, but this is kind of a shortcut. So now you've got this nice flat piece of paper. And as it just make sure it's still expanding here on me. So um, I'm going to clip it, keep reclipping it. Okay. Yeah, it's still expanding, but it's starting to dry out too. So anything I put on this at this point is going to totally just spread like crazy. Shall we try that? I was going to paint some flowers, but now this, whenever I see this wet of a canvas or a paper, I just can't seem to, to keep myself from wanting to watch this spread. So let's do it. All right, never do what I just did with my brush. Take your brushes out of the water and rest them somewhere else. Um, I love these bowls because they've got little resting spots on them. Um, I'm going to take this brush. This is another one of this Escoda Versatile brushes. And I'm going to start with a light color. It's yellow. Oh, well, here's my palette. See, I started, I sprayed sprayed my palette and then set it aside because I forgot I wanted to work with this. So anyway, if I I mean this is this is what gets me. Look at that. It's just like okay, whatever you want to do, you can do. Watercolor. Just just tell me where you want to go. It just it just takes my breath away every time. Okay, so it looks like I've got to start on a flower there. Now, this is very wet, so there's not too much I can do after I get this initial composition. I'm going to call this the composition. Um, maybe... I mean, is that mind blowing, or is it just me? No, it's totally. <laughs> yeah, Bess, I love you. <laughs> I saw. I uh, you hate watercolors, or so you told me. I was not doing the names. Well, you know, I saw my kids. Sure. The other day, I ran into him. He and I were good buddies, and he was really, he's just an awesome art teacher. He really is. Um, really great teacher, really cares about the kids. Hats off to all you teachers out there, by the way, while I'm on the topic. And I totally forgot to ask him, but both my kids can't hate watercolor. And I was going to say, what the hell did you do to them <laughs> to make them hate watercolor? <laughs> Don't play Mr. McHugh. <laughs> it's not Mr. McHugh's fault. <laughs> oh, and here's another thing we can do. Let's make some, while we're here, with this super wet, nice wet paper, I'm going to just dip in to that sap green. In fact, let me grab. Here's another tool that I use is I have a plate that I just got, I got it, you know, at one of those sale type places, kitchen household stuff. And um, first one's nice to mix color on. And let's just let this one out and see what it does. It's going to bleed too much probably. Yeah, it's bleeding too much. We'll just let that be. Okay. We'll just let that be. And here's the other thing you can do is you can just, if you, if it did something and you're like, meh, I don't like that, just go ahead in and lift it up. But there was a beautiful color coming about from that. And it was a, it was from this yellow. 
and this orange. And then my jacket. Okay. And it's made of really nice um, peachy color. So I'm actually going. Mary really asks, do you know of any watercolors that are permanent and won't reactivate when you add layers of mixed media? No. Um, watercolor will reactivate. The way around that, I'm going to dip into this yellow ochre here and just show you what happens. It's a beautiful color, the result. The way around, um, use either inks and lighten them with water. And um, just having a sip of my beer here, bitter melon beer. Yum. <laughs> use acrylic paints and just either use a um, use water to wash them down, wash them out, or use I uh, never can remember the name of this stuff, but it's right here. Glazing fluid. Glazing fluid. Golden glazing fluid. Liquitex makes it too. I think a lot of companies do. Hard boxes who like to touch it and sip beer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I love the watermelon beer. But um, okay, so the glazing fluid will increase. Oh uh, well, you can really make it look the the glazing medium translucency with the acrylic paints. If you look back, I had I did a jelly plate thing recently, and I used I wound up use, using the tra uh, glazing liquid because I really find more and more lately that I just just don't I love a, I love translucent Mary asked intense intense would definitely work thanks Mary yeah intense pencils or blocks is water soluble but non wettable um, because it's an ink so any kind of ink would do that would um, yeah, this is almost like I've got a video coming up in a few, in I don't know it's been sitting there on my desk. This Rita says I like to use daily roaming water down. The inks. Okay. Oh, she will. <laughs> <laughs> the any of the any of the inks water down are nice because the. Uh, but they're usually pretty intense. But, you know, I have done mixed media on top of watercolor. You just have to kind of use a really light hand. It's not a guarantee. But once stuff is dry, like this painting here is dry, this beginning of a painting here. Or you could apply a gum medium over the painting to seal it before proceeding with other media. Uh, yeah, you could do that. Yeah, you could do that. I think, though, that if you watch, look at what well, I'm putting a wet brush on top of that. And it's really not, it's not like it's going to immediately pick up. You have to really scrub. Some colors are now starting to pick up. And maybe that's just my brush was dirty. You'd have to really scrub to get that paint to pick up. So I use mixed media. Oops. Also have a background on that painting now. Um, oh, it's actually pretty nice. Um, yeah, let me do this while I'm thinking about it. I'm going to set this aside to dry for a minute. But like, look at, can you, I don't know if you can see. Let me see. It is. Oh, is it really not? Oh, it's good. Like, yes. Yes. Yeah. The inks are the inks are very intense. 
don't know if you can see this through the camera, but there's all these little like rays coming away from that center. This was, oh, Marsha's here, so she knows exactly what I'm going to do. Marsha and I discovered this together when she was, uh, she came to my studio recently. I'm going to just get this. I guess that painting's going in a little bit of a different direction. Um, yeah. I'm going to put some, a mix of color down here. Ooh, that is one. It's just a mix of crazy happy. Totally making my, my clean water dirty here. I really just want to show you this thing that Marsha and I discovered. Oh, uh -huh. We had such a nice time. It's such a nice time. She was in town here in Philadelphia. And she came to my studio and it was had a nice. Oh, and Mary says so beautiful. Thank you, Mary. Um, okay, so I'm going to put that stencil down there. And just kind of push it down, and then I'm going to set it aside, and we'll all get surprised. <laughs> I know, I know. I was watch. I, I watch the videos and uh, talk to people on Facebook, and think, oh man, you know those those beaming tra transporter machines they had in Star Trek. I wish we had one of those. Okay, so what was I actually going to do to me? Okay, so I got this. I got this going. And that's the thing with. Now I am looking for. I think I'm going to try this one first. That first page is. I'm a real slob. Oh, God. I'm a real slob. <laughs> oh, that. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take a little round brush here. This is a size 10. And let's see, what color? Nice to start, best to start with your lighter colors so that um, you can build up on that. In fact, I think I'm going to grab a pencil. I'm a pencil. My favorite pencil. Here we go. Here it is. This is, I love this pencil. It's a jumbo. Favorite Castell HB jumbo. It just feels so nice. So I'm just going to draw some really quick shapes. And now what I've got is flowers. <laughs> I just call it flowers. <laughs> no matter what shape it is. <laughs> Even if it's a square, I still call it flower. <laughs> Even our flowers, anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's just a suggestion. <laughs> it's just a suggestion. Okay, so I'm going to start laying some paint in here. And the nice thing about this, working like this with these really loose shapes, is that um, you've got lots of areas defined for you. So I can go in here and start just adding some color. Okay. Okay. I like to add usually three colors, three of the same color. I like to keep my painting balanced as I'm moving through it. So if I have, um, I'm going to paint this in yellow. That's a little heavy handed with the water there. And I'm going to paint this in yellow. I'm going to actually make that a little lighter yellow. 
this. I'm gonna pretend that the sun is coming from here. So I'm gonna pick up. And that's another really great thing to know about watercolors is that if you've got too much going there, going with a damp, clean brush and lift. I don't know why people think watercolors are hard. Do you feel better mm -hmm. about them yet? <laughs> I'm I talking like to my daughter. To, I feel like I need to learn how to do them now. There was, there's so much more to them than I thought. What did you learn? That they were not at all like oil paints. No, they are not at all like oil paints, except for that they are a whole lot like oil paints. Oh, no. You know, truth on um, when I was painting with oils and got started just developing terrible headaches from even the less toxic terpenoid or whatever it's called um, that was supposed to be odorless. I turned to acrylic paints and I never got along real well with acrylics. I like them better now than uh, that I have the golden acrylics and I have that um, it's, it's, <laughs> I just forget what that stuff is called. The glaze medium. I like them better now than I did with that, but um, it was the translucency that I was missing when I first started with acrylics, and that was way back, oh my gosh, in the 80s. Anyway, and Golden's wasn't out. I think it was... I, there probably was, but where, when I was at school at the academy, it was only oils. They didn't do watercolors either. So now I have some stage shapes, and I'm telling you, this does not need to be flowers. You could just take your little pencil and do that any way you want. And then, um, so this is dry here. So it's not going to work, but I'm going to wet this down, and then I'm going to, and then I'm going to go into this darker color. And here's here's going to lay that down. And what should happen, and is happening, is once I get that color touching that yellow, it's just going to spread because that yellow paint is wet. Now, I'm not promising a great masterpiece here tonight. This oh, is Tamari Hi Tamari. How's every hey? Don't forget to like go over there and put the thumbs up on me, okay? Talking about like this video. Um so now I'm just gonna try to get some I'm just going to flood this with water. And so that's a nice technique to use to just get, to kind of lose oh, the Tamari edge. Tamari said she already did. She already did what? Oh, thanks, Tamari. And she said hello. Hello. Um, yeah, yeah. Liking is important. <laughs> it's like Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Um, okay, so one thing I will tell you about hot press paper. Thank you, Maddie. <laughs> you people are just really good examples. This is leadership material here. <laughs> <laughs> I liked you first. <laughs> I, I might not have actually. <laughs> this is competitive, people. <laughs> She just, she's been working. She's an environment. What do you call yourself? What do you call yourself? Ranger Rick. Ranger Rick. <laughs> Ranger Rick. She's um, an environmentalist. She's been, since she moved back here from Chicago. Chicago, thank you. <laughs> Maybe you should just tell this story. She's oh, been. Really? She's been working um, for a state rep, and like two weeks after you got that job? No, like two weeks ago. No, no. 
did you get the Morris job? Like two weeks after she started working for this really nice state rep, she gets a job with this huge, beautiful arboretum, like three minutes from where she lives. So today was her last day as a government worker. He's I was, a great rep, though. I really liked him. Oh, he's a great. Sounds like a great guy. But um, she's better suited to being muddy <laughs> and wearing her hiking boots. I'm just really a fashion icon. Yeah. She's where we all walk around here. God help you. <laughs> God help us this right. Oops, did I say that out loud? Okay. <laughs> all right, so now I've got some of that ochre again, that gold. What's it called? Yellow ochre. You know, and I'm going to throw in some blue. And see, let's see what kind of a green we get. It should be a pretty nice and muddy green. Yeah, it's a muddy green. Just for fun. What happens if I add some of that? Was olive, I think. Nice. Um, should I make these flowers, or should I just make them loose, abstract shapes? I always think everything should be flowers, but I'm a little biased. <laughs> I happen to like them too. You know what? I think I'm going to leave. Oh, now I know what I'll do. I'm going to go real light with this. Real light. So you can barely see it. You might not even be able to see it, but it's here. And this is dry. So I won't have to worry about, about it wicking. But I think I'll make some really light sort of shapes around this. Jean says she agrees with me. She's still in her gardening club. Oh, Jean is a wonderful gardener. I've, from what I've seen on Facebook. Oh, yeah. Big gardener. I love seeing your, picture, your garden pictures on Facebook, Jean. They're beautiful. Oh, it's like I had some dirty water there. That's okay. You know, it's like if something like that happens. I know it's really hard when you're first starting out to not like to have like something like, oh god, that was that's pink and it was supposed to be white. Oops, I need a new rag, that's for sure. I just washed the whole batch of rags don't don't worry about it just let it go when stuff happens that's unexpected <laughs> yeah probably why I like watercolor so much oh it's all pink now but look at that well I think that needs another flower in that case And make a nice light one. So it looks like it's far in the background. And that's what happens on my channel. <laughs> you were expecting one thing, and you got another. You do it. I was watching Lindsay there today, and I'm sure a lot of you know Lindsay. Um, why can't I think of her last name? The Frugal Crafter. She's so fantastic. And she always seems to like not how first of all how she can paint a painting in an hour. She paints a whole painting in an hour. There, there, flower. Hey, let me grab. How are we doing on time? Oh, jeez, look how late it is. Oops. Okay, let me just, unlike Lindsay, I will not be finished this painting, but I wanted to show you, let me just show you one more thing, let me just show you a couple more things. This is, this is one of those Mensa Japanese brushes that I just 
bought not too long ago. Um, and I have found them to be really fantastic. I think that that's the indigo. And I want to see if you. Is there, is there something funny going on? <laughs> uh, uh, Jean says she lives in the desert. And I said I would love to see the desert. And she said it's beige and beige and lots of beige with a blue river. <laughs> I did and with the blue river. I didn't realize you lived in the desert, Jean. Uh oh, it's turning into a flower. Flowers happen. They do. I see flowers everywhere. That's one of my hashlant tags. <laughs> it's like, uh, this is going to need a lot of work to come together, this painting. I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to finish it up in 12 minutes. But, you this is an opportunity to run the color. Okay. Yeah. So I ran a stream of I let a stream of color run down there. And then I run a stream let a stream of yeah, the indigo was. Which one was that? I think it was. It was definitely the Daniel Smith indigo. Yeah, I like it too. They, it's really recommended in painting, not to use black. So, I think that's not really accurate because if you want to use black. I, used, I don't have black in my palette at this moment, but um, whenever I use it, I usually mix it with um, maybe a Prussian blue. You don't want it to be too sort of stark. Uh, black, there's not a whole, there's really no black in nature is the, is the saying. But all right, looks like I have another painting to work on. But I want, didn't want to. Let's just look at this. Is still drawing. Looks like I just started two paintings tonight. And though there's just some beautiful feathery things happening. So what I would do is. I'm going to go in here and sort of just slap on a little bit of water and then let some color swim right into that, right where it happens. So it's almost like a conversation working on a painting in this way. It's almost like, what did the painting do? And now what should I do? It's not, what should I do? It's I do something unexpected, the painting reacts in an unexpected way, and then I work with it. God, there's some beautiful stuff going on right in this painting right now. It's really subtle. I don't know that you can see it. But let's take, I'm going to put both of these pieces out of the way for the moment. I'll go back and work on them more. But I did want to see what happened to this and you can see how that stencil ooh it's really cool because there's some let me just mop up a little bit first there's some areas that it's really light and then there's the darker areas where the puddles of water gathered so probably if you're going to work this way I would recommend that you tape that down and you can just tape a painting down, by the way. You can just tape it to a board or use the block. Blocks are more expensive, but I usually um, go back and forth between blocks and boards because blocks are kind of expensive. And the other thing I wanted to do is so cool the shadows. What? The simple. Oh, I know, right? 
It is. Oh, you're just seeing that now. Yeah, I get that pause, and it kind of drives me crazy. Oh, yeah, it's a really nice technique, but so you don't have that bubbling, or maybe it was the bubbling that made it so cool. I don't know. You know what? That's the whole point, is that sometimes you can control this stuff. Oh, Mary says, this paper question, her poor, nice, poor 90-pound art journal is <laughs> bulging and bursting. Is there mm. another heavier weight paper journal that you can recommend? Yeah. Um, 90-pound art journal. Yeah. I'm actually, I think next week, um, doing a binding, uh, binding video. I think I'm doing the long stitch. I'm, I've got two videos for next week, but one of them is binding. And also, I have to start writing this stuff down now. Okay, there's a Copic, no, not Copic, pamphlet. Can't spell pamphlet. Five hole pamphlet stitch that is in my um, book binding playlist. I will link that. I will link. What was the other thing I was going to link? Was it Daniel Smith's color charts? Um. And there was something else maybe I'll remember. Maybe there wasn't anything else. This is a, uh, these journals are really nice. They're, they're very, very nice. Stillman and Burns. Stillman and Burn Beta. It's a 180 pound cold press. It's the Beta. Comes in different sizes. Oh, great brushes. And I'm going to, yeah, thank you, Bart. And uh, exact colors. I'm going to link exact colors that I am using tonight so that, um, but I digress. Let me, let me finish talking about this. Uh, Stillman and Burn um, is really a nice journal. The big one lies perfectly flat. You can pile on. Now, here's a really good example of I used I used watercolor, I used gesso, I used stencils and inks and everything on this. Um, yeah, there's watercolor here. That's that basically been my color choice for the past couple of years. But this is a really nice journal. I love it. I'm almost done with it, but I, it's a really good one. Um, the smaller one, I, the paper's really great. It just doesn't lie quite as flat. And maybe it's wow, 180. Yeah, 180. Yeah, really good paper. Stillman and Burn. They actually um, started selling their paper in sheets. Um, their paper's fantastic. Oh, and Mark says, how about a few like, sentences about cold press versus hot press paper? Yeah, the, um, I did start to say something about the hot press. And I will say this, that I think that the hot press paper, though it's really good for, like, if you wanted to stamp or stencil cleanly on with your watercolor, this is the choice. Now, that being said, it doesn't hold up to as much abuse as a cold press paper. I don't know why. That's just been my experience. So, um, yeah. Uh, but try it out. Hot press is very smooth. So you can stamp on that. And I probably will. I might just play with this and make a journal page like. I think that would be really fun. So everyone's saying there's some really beautiful colors happening on the right plate. I know. Would you look over here? This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> Yo, this is what I'm talking about, people. 
watercolor? Very nice. Canon is very nice, very available, perfectly fine. Um, that, see, that's a brown, and uh, that's from that blue and orange, the indigo and the orange. And the more, that makes my favorite gray. Look at that gray, right? I love to make grays. Um, and you know, I take this, I swear, I think I take this out of every live stream. Where I just dropped it. You might be spared the color wheel. But um, get yourself a color wheel. The client out loud. Client out loud. Okay, so journals. Oh, and um, if you want to, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm just going down the checklist in my mind, and I keep like a like a little hamster. I get I get confused. Okay, it's not the one beer. It's my state of mind. Okay, so this was what I wanted to show you. Okay, this is the painting. I unfortunately took it off the board. I don't know why I did that. But these colors. Now, what time is it? Uh, it is it's almost. It's almost eight. So. Also, Lark says that her experience with Hampton and then paper is like a little um, She's eighteen by ten years. Um, in the middle of that, it eventually settles back down. Flat. It will settle back down, and again, you can stretch it. And um, basically, with paper, what you do to one side of the paper you should do to the other side of the paper. So if you wet one side, you wet the other side. And as in our, there's, here. Okay, so that's been wet and re-wet, and you can see it's not perfect, but it is fine to paint on that. And I will paint on that. And a lot of paintings I do, I wet both sides. I wet one side, flip it, wet the other side, clip it. Flip and clip. So let me just show you these fine tech because I was talking about them in a recent haul. But I wanted to see, I wanted to put some stamens. It shows up so nicely. This these fine tech Germany. I don't know if the same woman um, still has them on sale for like $18. But they're just beautiful paints. And you can see they are. I'm not being paid. Nobody paid me to do this. I just I just like sharing good information. Um, although if you pay me to do something, I might. They are mica-based watercolors. Sorry. And, um, oh, also can you spell that? F I N E T E C, fine tech. Blick has them, and there's a link. I will try to re dig up the fine tech link. Yeah, they want that. They want <laughs> everybody wants that. Mark says she wants that. She wants that. Yeah, I I sort of was. I was torn, and I got from. The Ganzai Tombies, they're metallics. So let's just take a look at those. The one, the first thing is like, look at all this. Oh God, there's what, six of them? Okay. Now, I'll tell you the truth. I really was surprised at how much I liked these uh, Ganzai Tombies. I think because I couldn't find anybody who had worked with highly pigmented paints to review them. So I was having trouble figuring out whether they were really good or just better than um, student grade. But I do like them a lot. I, but you can say, I hate to say it, but I'm just going to put, I'm going to put a little bit of gold down here just so you guys can see this. 
That's the Ganzai Tombi flower. And let's do the Fine Tech flower. I'll put it down here. I mean, they're different colors, but the opacity is incredibly different. Okay. I mean, I think they're both nice. Actually, depending on oh, the light. That Thank you. I'm just about done it. I wanted to add some gold, and I think I need to add a little bit of dark. No, oh, do you think she does too? Oh. Thank you. It'll probably go up on my Etsy shop. I'm thinking about rebuilding my Etsy shop. Uh, I'm really trying to paint more. It's hard to find the time, as most of you know, because you're trying to do the same thing. I'm just going to make this a little darker so it gives more recess. But I think that it would, do you think it needs more gold? I kind of think, I feel like it needs more gold. I think it needs more gold. Oh, it's just, oh, uh, June just wants seeds for those flowers. Seeds? I agree. Seeds where? Oh, inside the little bowl part? Maybe. In here? Maybe. More seeds? Oh, seeds, right. The pi pistols and, I cannot <laughs> remember this. Oh my God, pistols and stamens. Pistols and stamens. Barb says lovely colors, lovely flower pods. So um, anyway, yeah, more pistols. I agree. That's where these two brushes come in handy. This brush and that other. <laughs> what am I missing there? <laughs> um, uh, um, so she wants seeds for those flowers so that she can grow them. <laughs> Isn't that a shame? <laughs> Barb does too. <laughs> I saw the most incredible flower the other day at um, Meadowbrook Gardens. It looked like I was with a friend and she said, my God, that looks like one of your flowers, <laughs> which is to say not a flower at all. But it had a, it had to have five. How many do I have here? Five, yeah. But then it had, like, say that was yellow. And then it had another, it looked like it was pasted on. It had like another pansy-shaped flower on the inside. And well, that's just insane. It was. And I forget what it's called, but I think I did take a picture of it. I'll have to look and I'll post it online if I can find it. Um, yeah, and this was, this was purple. I'm not kidding you. I mean, I really... I'm not kidding you. I did not imagine this. And I have proof. That was purple, and I'm not kidding. You sound like we are really <laughs> doubting you here. It happened. <laughs> well, I have been doubted in my life. <laughs> this was yellow, and that at least that's what I recall. And it was really just like that. It looked well, actually the purple was a little bit bigger as I recall. It was after a root beer float. That might have been why I saw that. Basically, that was the flower. I'll look for it on my phone and post it. But anyway, gang, thanks so much for coming by. It was really nice having you all here. And thanks, Bess, for oh, being the voice of the voice of the comp, of chat board. <laughs> I'm only good. as good as the comments people make. <laughs> you people make great comments. Yeah, they really do. This yeah. is a fun chat board. <laughs> yeah, my folks are awesome. So, um, yeah, I'll be back with some videos next week. Thing, jelly plate prints. In the meantime, I'm going to go drink another watermelon beer. Oh, Thank you. Thank you, guys. It's always such a pleasure. And once again, um, there hopefully will not be any post-game show tonight, as I now know <laughs> how to hang up. <laughs> oh, God,
<laughs> oh my heavens, people, I need help. <laughs> so thanks everybody. Have a great weekend. Oh, dark kitties, okay. Okay. Yeah.